So, last time on the Family Matson Plays D&D, what did we do? Do y'all remember? Yes. We had a wonderful time. You look better now. So I remember somebody got a message in their mind. A message, a mind message. Yep. Oh, shoot. Well, never mind. I'll have to come back to that later. I didn't plan well enough, but we'll get back to it. We'll, we'll, it'll happen. You just there. wait. No, so, no, you no, got, no. so you got a mind message. <laughs> right? And it told you some cool stuff, but you didn't know who sent the message. It warned you about the evil in white. And begged you to come to the mountains, to Scale Ridge. And Marilyn, you shared this message with the party and decided that you were going to head to White, gather some supplies and find out more about Scale Ridge, and then get paid for your uh, heroic you did. invasion of the goblin caves and defeating their leader. <laughs> So then what happened? Did y'all get any cool stuff while you were uh, fraternizing with the uh, yes. the Lord of White? The magic arrows. <sighs> and some cool ninja armor. And Merlin got, what's it called? Oh, a fire breathing potion, which is pretty cool. And then you guys headed for the, the Stonehaven Inn. And we called it for the night. So, if I remember, it wasn't super late when you went there. You guys could have done some more stuff with uh, the rest of the night. Would you want to do anything else before the end of the night? Or would you call it an early night and kind of get ready to leave the next day and head out to Brentwood? Because you did talk to Orville and he told you that there was kind of two routes you could take to get up north. And you guys chose to go back through Brentwood. Hmm. So, did you want to... Hang out, do any socializing, hang out with Orville some more, maybe meet some of the the rapscallions that hang out in his bar. Are there anybody coming there? We don't know, do we? Yeah, nothing in particular that you know is going on. You're just kind of waiting around. You gathered a lot of supplies. Maybe I did say it was evening, because I do remember something about it being evening when you met the traveling merchant. So maybe whatever you'd do, it would have to be a nighttime affair. Before it got too terribly late. We didn't want to travel at night, so... Yeah, you decided you were going to head back to the end. I just wanted to know if there was anything else you wanted to do before that. So if I'm not hearing everything, anything, everyone can deduct one gold point for their room at the Stonehaven Inn for the night. Look at this artwork! You can't see. I see some dudes. Some dudes. Dudes. Yep. I know, I know that guy. <laughs> okay. Is yeah, that he's one? Like on TV show. One gold point. One gold. Mm-hmm. Points of just in these inns. So, you guys make your way back to the Stonehaven Inn to rest up for the night before heading back up to Brentwood on the old road that you've traveled before. Well, that's terrible. You're in your room for the night. You've had a good dinner. Spent some time merrymaking. Drinking the booze. <laughs> kind of t- telling stories to each other. Uh, maybe talking about who you're looking forward to visiting back in Brentwood. And uh, you guys kind of bed down. The night starts out uneventful like the last few times you stayed in the Stonehaven Inn. But this night, the tranquil, soundless night that you're used to hearing in white, is broken by a quiet murmur that starts off in the distance. Everybody roll me a perception check. Could this be nothing? Yes, it can be. But it is something. Instead, it is something. I hope. Okay, let's see here. Where is that? Where we think? Somewhere, you better find it soon. 16 for me! 16? Does that include your, uh... Uh... Whatever that thing is called? Perception bonus? Perception bonus... Do I have a perception bonus? Oh, I do have a perception bonus. Where? There? Where it says perception? 
So 16 plus uh, perception. In the one with perception, is there any plus there or is there oh, just two. plus plus two? And then your the bubble is, what is that called? Marked in. Yeah, it's marked in, which means you have that as a skill and you get your proficiency. You have proficiency in professions, perception, so you get plus two uh, oh, on top of that. So you have a 20. So with total. with a twenty, you Asharis. Well, what did the uh, what did Ghost Slinger get? Eleven. Eleven. All right. So Asharis, <laughs> you stir in bed as you hear this sound. Your your keen elven senses pick out that that's unusual, and uh, you wake up, and you kind of hear this sound as it starts to slowly get louder. At first, you think it's maybe just a distant conversation, but it slowly grows into a grumble of people, and eventually, it's apparent. That something big is going on outside. Uh-oh. A mob. Get the pitchforks and the torches! Oh no, not again. <laughs> well, uh, what, what do you do as you're hearing this kind of rabble outside? Hmm. Should I wake you up? Can you go out to investigate? Alright, I'm gonna wake up the, uh... My countryman, the ghost. All right, wake him up. Oi! Hark. What? Do you hear that sound? I hear nothing. No, you hear it now. It's it's hard to miss. When she wakes you up, there is a lot of stuff going on outside. You can hear kind of people shouting every now and again. And uh, you definitely hear, like, people moving around, some clanking, some boot steps. There's, Wait, there's a the lot. Window? Can we look out the window? Yeah. So we don't have to go down there until we know what's down there. So if we look out the window, what do we see? It's a mob. That's what it sounds like. Get the pitchforks and the torches. You had the right idea, Tiffany. Get the get the uh, the poop bucket. We can throw it out the window on them. <laughs> <laughs> <Gardaloo! laughs> okay. So we're looking out the window. We see a bunch of people mauling around. Are they asking for the our room, our hotel, our inn. Are these people hanging around our hotel front door, Derek, or are they just standing out in the hall in the street? You guys don't see anybody. Uh, you just have. You can see more light over the buildings that are adjacent you across this this road that makes its way through White, and you hear a lot more noise than you would normally expect to hear. Uh, and white uh, late late at night. You know that there's no one around this town after the sun goes down. And suddenly, for some reason on this night, there's a lot of commotion and there's a lot more light. So as you guys are kind of feeling like this isn't exactly normal and it may not be good, there's suddenly a knock on the door. Oh, uh, no. A, a series of sharp knocks with a fist. Knocking like the police. Oi. I'm going out on the balcony and hide. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, I'm trying to figure out what to do now. So somebody knocked on the door. All right, Should the knock we... comes again. <laughs> Ashoris, Ghost Slinger, Merlin, are you in there? Please, please hurry. All right. Let's yes, who is it? On. You recognize the voice. He doesn't sound like whatever's going on outside. It sounds like someone you've met before. It's the innkeeper, for Christ's sake. No, it's the guy from down the street at the tavern. Oh, it is? I don't know. I'm guessing. <laughs> Ghost Slinger! Hey, who is it? Who is it, then? Ghost what? Slinger! What? What do you want to do? Nothing. Someone <laughs> knocks on the door and you recognize who it is. Oh, wait a second! Open the door! When you open the door... Oh, thank the gods! We've got to get you out of here right now. Quick, grab what you can carry. You've been accused of being evil magic users, and they will burn you if they catch you. It's John the Squire, but he's not really? dressed like a squire right now. <laughs> he's dressed as a peasant, wearing a hooded cape. Right, put on some disguises. Let's get out of here. Run away. What about my gold that I paid for the night? That's what I want to know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just we're, gonna, we're gonna be burned at the stake. <laughs> All right, let's hit the road. We've got to get you out of start. here quickly, and try not to look like wizards. 
He leads you out the back of the Stonehaven Inn, going through the kitchen, and out into a little back alley, not much bigger than a single person wide, and stinking of rotten food. The ground is slippery beneath your feet. The path leads out onto a main road. But as you come out, you don't see many people on this side of the building. Mostly just people coming out of their houses to look around at what's causing the commotion. John quickly scurries down the street, ducking between the people, trying to, not to draw too much attention to himself. Roll stealth. Uh-oh. Oh, Jessica's got some stealth. The rest of us, I'm not sure. I don't know how you guys are going to do. Ten. For who, you? Yeah, for me. I don't know that I have stealth. No, I do have stealth. You also get the whatever number is next to it, so you should get your four. dexterity mm-hmm. bonus plus your proficiency modifier. Uh, so sixteen. Okay. What's Ghost Slinger? Fourteen plus three and two. two. So nineteen. Okay. And Merlin, you rolled a nineteen with whatever modifiers you have, which I think is probably flat. But it's still a 19. So the three of you do a really good job of keeping up with John and ducking out of the way of every, everybody and not running into anybody or drawing attention to yourselves as you make your way down this road. You manage to find your way all the way to the wall of the city. You wonder where John is taking you. Surely the gatekeeper won't let you out while there's a mob running around chasing after you. John scurries up the staircase leading to the top of the wall. You can see that the wall is fairly thin, but it has a small battlement across the top. And there are mystical... Mis- ah, I knew I was going to trip over this. There are mesticulations looking down towards the other side of the wall. As you look through the holes where people would normally fire arrows through at an encroaching army, you can see that it looks like the inn has been dropping trash over the side of this wall for a while. This is it. You better get going if you want to get a head start on them. As you look behind you, you can see that the the crowd quickly making its way towards you. Amongst their number, you can see knights in full plate mail, swords drawn, raised over their heads, shouting the charge. I've got to scoot if I'm going to blend back into the crowd and help with the search. He winks at you. Thanks, John. We will never forget you. Oh, boy. I knew when I had the description... That it was you guys. I couldn't let them burn you. You're you're better than that. There's no way that you are what they say you are. Who gave that information to them, do you think? I don't know. I just overheard them in the the barracks. They was talking about it. Saying there was evil magic users back in town again. Hmm. It's gotta be Mr. White himself again. Who was there before? Oh, this seems a lot like when they ran the, uh, the... The church folks out of town. That was before me, but I heard it happen much the same way. Mob in the middle of the night. Hmm. It's better to run and play another day than to hang around and try to explain it away. Alright, let's get out of here. Over the wall. Over the wall into the garden. Over the wall into the garbage dump. Great. (laughs) I hope I see you again when I'm a knight. Farewell, friends. Make good your escape. And with that, John turns and scurries back down the steps out of view of the encroaching crowd so that he can get back to his duties and hopefully no one will have missed him while he was gone. So the three of you jump off into the trash pile? Oh yeah, we're jumping. Along with Sheila. Oh yeah, along with Sheila. (laughs) Merlin, you take five damage from falling. Oh wait, wait, wait. I have a rope. You don't have time for that. You just jumped off the edge of this wall we'll into a trash pit. Right. We have to jump. Asharis, you take wall. you take two damage from falling. And Ghost Slinger, you take four damage from falling. Why? Well, because you fell into a... Horrible trash. Yeah, you fell essentially from a 15-foot high wall into a big bunch of trash. So what do you do now that you are out the other side of town... Run away! <laughs> brave, 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 Sir Robin! <laughs> More detailed than run away. Yes, your immediate concern is getting away from town, but what do you do? Kind of, what's your strategy? You've just been woken up in the middle of the night, saved by the skin of your teeth by a friend you didn't know you had. 
We're going to head off in the direction that we need to go to go to Brentwood, of course. Okay. To the west. The west. No, that's the east. <laughs> no, that's the west. <laughs> Everything is the west. It Actually, isn't the it's either east or west. That's the direction we're going. And Brentwood's a little bit north. Because that's the general the direction you guys wanted to go. So Brentwood's a little bit north of White. Weast. <laughs> Northeast of White, yes. Weast. So you guys march on in the dark, making your way as best you can. Along, or actually, are you following the road or are you just headed out? I'm stay off the road. So you're going to stay off the road? Yeah. Okay. Seems like a good idea. Uh-oh. You're attacked by something off the road? So, the sun rises, or you guys head off into the dark, staying away from the road, and but still trying to make your way roughly in the direction of Brentwood. When the sun rises the next day, you don't feel great. The city you just saved from goblin raids ousted you at the tip of a pitchfork, pitchfork and torch. The grass oh, around you... You know, like an angry mob come for me with its pitchforks and torches... I mean, we got Homeboy who saved us. Yeah, you're welcome. (laughs) I knew he would come back. The grass around you is thankfully starting to grow thicker, and the dirt of white is starting to fade behind you, but you haven't been able to get a full night's rest. In front of you is the outstretched grasslands that you came through on your way to white the first time, and behind you, you think there is a town's worth of people who might still be on the hunt to find you. Would they chase you all the way to Brentwood? Who know, Who knew where you were planning on going next? Why would anyone want to drive you out of town, especially since you planned on leaving the next morning anyway? It seems like it's going to be a long day of walking ahead. And unfortunately, you're not exactly sure where you are relative to the road. Oh no. Mm-mm. We don't know where we are. Wait, I don't think I can get lost. Well, I can send my owl. I feel like I read that somewhere, but I can't get lost. Okay, so you think we're lost. You think you're lost. Use, I can use my owl to go up and find out where the road is, tell if it's clear or not. Nobody has a compass. Matter of fact, the owl should be flying all the time just to make sure we're not going to be attacked from somewhere else. Followed, exactly. Oh, I like that idea. So you've got Archimedes up in the sky keeping an eye out for you. You can't look through his yes. eyes the whole time, but... You but occasionally I can. <laughs> you can occasionally, and you can give him simple instructions like to come and get you if something happens. I'm going to assume you do something like that? Yes. So when you look through Archimedes' eyes and you look all around, you can definitely see back the direction that you know white is, and you can definitely see out the grass plains in front of you. But while you were trying to stay away from the road, you've strayed too far north. It's going to take you a good couple of extra hours walking today to make up for heading out in the dark. I hate that. Could be worse. We could be dead. I'm already tired. So as you guys head out with your bearings better now that it's morning and daylight, you manage to make your way back towards the direction of the old road a few hours later. Maybe by about noon, you're back on track. And. High noon, is that what you said, little girl? Mm-hmm. There aren't any interruptions as you follow along on the far side of the road, keeping an eye on where it is relative to where you are. But being off the road is definitely taking a toll on you. You're slowed down by being off in the grass. But you haven't heard any any sounds of hooves bearing down on you or barking hounds trailing at your ears. So maybe you're free. Maybe they just let you go once you got out of town. You don't have 100% confidence that someone's not still after you, but you would have expected if they were going to, they would have come after you within the first mile. It's a well, I was Brothers worried about reference. those soldiers, the big sword. No, that's out. Fifth Element. So they don't come after you in the first mile? Maybe it's two miles? Anyway. We don't get that one. <laughs> Fifth Element? I love that movie. Yeah. He says that if they don't chase you within the first mile, they're not going to chase you. So the evening is drawing on. It's getting rather late. You haven't made it nearly as far as you wanted to, but the sun is getting low on the horizon. It's starting to turn into a cool spring evening. You're going to want that heavy bedroll that you've been lugging along all day. The wind stayed down, and it doesn't seem like it's going to kick up this evening, 
and the sky overhead is mostly clear of clouds. You can see a crescent moon lighting the tops of the grass with a silvery glow once the sun sets. Hmm. At least we have some moon. Hopefully we're not going to get attacked again. So, do you guys want to go to sleep for the night? Do you want to make camp? So, how do you go about making camp out here, not on the road? Is there any trees around? Not really. This place is mostly uh, open grass and some some gentle rolling hills. You could try and get down in a, a depression, or you could try to get up on top of something to be able to see farther. Every now and again, as you've walked along in the grass, you'll see a, not like trees wooded area, but like shrubs. So like the tall grass will break and there'll be this kind of clump of bushes that have grown up, <laughs> probably with seeds dropped off by birds. I was staring at it. Wait, is that another reference? No, that's what birds do. No, because of the coconut. Because of the what? The coconut. Oh. Two swallows that can grip it by the husk. <laughs> it's not a question of where he grips it. You must bring us another shrubbery. <laughs> All right, so we're going to camp behind a shrubbery. Is that your plan? You're going to camp behind a shrubbery? Well, I don't want to have a fire. All right. Let's bed down and, and hide for the night. Probably you tamp down uh, some of this grass, this this tall grass, on the far side of a shrubbery so that you won't be spotted if anybody comes up the direction from white. And you lay out your bed rolls and start to bed down for the night. I will take the first watch. With Asharis taking let's the first be, watch. Let's be ready to uh, bolt if we have to. So let's just not you unpack everything. One of those incidents. Just the bed rolls and you always take. Oh, and I'm gonna. I guess you guys share around some of your some of your rations that you were planning for your long journey. Yeah, what did Dad buy? Ten pounds of bacon or something. <laughs> jerky. <laughs> Is that what it was? Jerky. I don't know. Jerky. Yeah. Jerky. Yeah. Jerky. Yeah. Jerky's good. So you share around some jerky, which you consider yourself lucky to have bought the day before, not realizing that you were not going to have a chance the day after. <laughs> Yeah, we uh, we definitely need the jerky, although it does give me heartburn. <laughs> if I remember one stick of it, it'll give you far worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, right, uh, so we go we go to bed, and yeah, Sharas takes the first watch. It's rather pleasant out. You're not bothered as you take your your watch this night. Who do you want to wake up to take the second watch? You want to have another incident? <laughs> Wake up, Merlin. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Mm-hmm. I thought she didn't sleep a lot. Right. Well, we're going to have to take a break then. I got to I got to put together an encounter. <laughs> can't I can't stand for this. <clears throat> oh, all right. I thought you were eating something, Derek. I think she wants the incident. I, think I don't. Should... I actually don't. Then just take the watch. I don't want it because it's going to happen again. If you take the watch, then it won't happen. If I don't take the watch, then it won't happen. I'm in the wrong book. Let's see. Jeez, if you had a watch, you'd know what time it was. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have watches. I mean, we're adventurers. We're adventuring. And dying. Remember when you died that one time? What? She did go down. She didn't die. What do I want to? We have to. I'm about to show you all. Yeah, yeah. Getting close. You eating chicken nuggets, Tiffany? Orange chicken. Orange chicken. Okay, cool. Oh, I know what I could do, but it's not in here. Oh, I do hate. Can't believe we got thrown out of white after all we did for those people. Hey, welcome back. We're back. It appears to be working now. Hmm. Just in time for... Your encounter. Asharis mm-hmm. to hear something. There's a rustling in the bushes nearby. As Asharis, as you're trying to wake a very... Grumpy. Not enthusiastic ghost slinger, there's a rustling in the bushes nearby. 
Oh no, not again. <laughs> Do you alert Ghost Slinger to your concerns about the thing that or about whatever might be in the bushes nearby? Ghost Slinger, there is a monster nearby. <laughs> Do you tell her that you feel it in your bones? I hear something. Best wake up. It's the same spot. Mm -hmm. We're out. And then it happened again. No, it's scary. Are we heading to Brentwood? Yes. As Ghost Slinger is taking her time, getting a bed, she is sleeping closest to the bush. And all of a sudden, something wraps around her legs and starts okay. to squeeze at them. Okay. Asharis, you get a good look at it. You find yourself looking at a giant constrictor snake. Oh my god. Uh-oh. constrictor. Cut the head off. Cut the head off. Remember? But isn't it wrapped around you? Like, remember? Big brother. Yeah, I remember. You roll, gotta cut the head off. Roll a initiative, everyone, as this giant constrictor snake is attacking our poor ninja girl. Because it's always me when anything happens. I got a movie quote. 15. See if you can guess where it's from. Okay. Shoot it, shoot it. Where? Anywhere. Is that from Tremors? No, it's from Star Wars. Right! <laughs> They're in the trash dump! He's in the trash, yeah, I was trying to think of that earlier. They're in the trash They're in the trash! The lizard, the snake, or whatever it is, come up and uh, grabbed him. Is that 15 including your, what's that thing called? Initiative bonus, Asharis? I'm looking for initiative. Initiative bonus is on page. Well, I'm moving it back over here in my way! I don't see initiative. Should be uh, it should be on, on the first page. Do you see? Ghost slinger? It's right there. Where? Oh. <laughs> it's right in the middle of the page, honey. Top. Okay. 19. 19. Total. That makes you higher. Who else we got? We got a Merlin and a Ghost Slinger. Jessica, or uh, Ghost Slinger gets 15 total. When I figure out what the heck page this thing is on, I will let you know whether or not I need to know more information. Whether we're killed or not. <laughs> whether we're dead. We're probably dead. I'm going to die first. I almost died from something. There it is. I got it. Oh, I need to roll for Merlin. That's the last one I'm waiting for. What was yeah, your initiative bonus, one, Merlin? One? One plus. Okay. Tiffy, will you roll me 8d12? A d12? Eight of them. Eight. Yeah. One more eight than seven. Tell me what the number is. 49. Okay. This doesn't seem very good, does it? No, that wasn't a very good roll. It was not too far off. All right, Asharis, you are first. Actually, no, 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 no. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a, a terrible DM because I described it. The tail of this really big giant constrictor snake is wrapped around Ghost Slinger's legs, and it squeezes on her. Um. Does an eleven plus? Does a 17, no, yes, does a 17 beat your armor class, Ghost Slinger? Yes. You are grappled. You have to beat a 16 dexterity or, what are they called? It's not just dexterity. There's (sighs) athletics and acrobatics check to get away from this snake. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. while it's squeezing you, you take... Eight more damage. Ooh. I'm going to die. <sighs> what does the noise on Zelda make when his health is running low? Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> This is why I didn't want another incident. This is the thing you want. Oh, well, I shouldn't have said anything. I should have just been silent for nothing. Well, if you're awake, it's easier to not get grabbed by a giant snake. <laughs> All right, so what does she need to roll? It's Asharis' turn now. You see this giant snake attacking your friend, who was admittedly being belligerent, not wanting to take her watch, but you still don't want her to get eaten by a giant snake. Seems accurate. And you... You do have your equipment handy, so 
let's say you already have one sword out because you are on watch and you're kind of on edge from being you mm-hmm. worried about being chased all day. Mm-hmm. So you can draw the other one as a as your your uh, bonus action this turn. Okay. So where's the head of this thing? You see the head of this snake is kind of also curled around towards Ghost Slinger. So imagine there's this bushes that you guys are kind of camped behind. Yeah. And Ghost Slinger was not, her bedroll was not terribly far from the bushes. So this tail has snuck at, or snaked out of the bushes on one side of her and grabbed her legs. And the head of I'm the ahead. snake is making its way around the other direction, headed for her face. Oh, okay. So I can hit him with the swords. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Chop its head right off. Uh, if you roll good enough. Okay. That is what I shall do. Apparently, nobody likes this character. So, 16? 16 will do it. And 1d6. So, you get 1d6 plus your dexterity modifier, right? Because it's a finesse weapon. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you get to do the same thing with your other sword because you took that one feat. (laughs) I need to roll 1d6. Six. Ouch. So that plus your dexterity modifier. Um, uh, four. Okay. All right. That's your main hand strike. You can also attack it with your off hand. Um, d twenty. Ooh, nineteen. Ooh. Yeah, that definitely does it. It's another d six plus your dexterity modifier. Four, two, four, so eight. All right. Yeah, you don't chop its head off, but you do put a nasty gash on the side of its head uh, as you're you're swiping at it. Ghost Slinger, you are still in your bedroll with your feet being constricted very tightly by a lizard that's, or sorry, a snake that is three times as big as you are. Hey. Okay. What are you going to do? <laughs> so first it's ghost, and now it's snakes. <laughs> Why did it have to be snakes? <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark. Very good, honey. What are you gonna do, little girl? Well, how do I get this thing off of me? Well, Good you Raiders. could try. You could yeah. try stabbing at it. You can. You can try to get away from it first. So you have to beat a uh, DC sixteen acrobatics or acrobatics or athletics check. And then you can stab it, or you can stab it and then try to get away from it. It's up to you. What do you want to do? I just want to stab it. You just want to stab it? All right, stab away. Roll me a d20. Wait, what are you stabbing with? Knives? Yeah, is it a dagger or a sword? A dagger. The daggers have less. Exactly. Oh. <clears throat> and so that if I hit myself, that's less thing. I actually don't know how daggers work. It's probably worth reading because there's bonuses that da- that thieves can do, like so rogues I heard about get. About stabbing myself. I mean, the snake is on me, so yeah, this is reasonable. The is it my turn next. It is your turn next. Does that mean now or next? Next. Eight. Does she get plus her dexterity modifier? How would I do that? Well, she gets plus her dexterity modifier plus her proficiency. Which I think is five. Yeah, five. That'll do it. Uh, that's a uh, thirteen. So then the daggers are D four. One D four plus her dexterity modifier. Four plus her dexterity is three. So that's seven. And then she can. I don't know how daggers work. If they work like short swords, or if you can get them both out at the same time. Ghostslinger, roll me another D twenty. Another horrible okay. <laughs> Nineteen. Okay, I'll say you can get out your dagger and we'll count that strike as a good strike. So go ahead and roll your D four. Let's go again. Let's go again. Four. Oh, a four? Let's take her to the crack stable. Oh, that's a four, as in she rolled a four plus her three. That's, that's three another seven. seven. Okay. As Ghost Slinger stabs at the snake. She gets into... Okay, so the snake 
opens its mouth up real big to bite her. And as it does, she jabs up into its mouth and just a torrent of blood starts spewing out of it all over her. Yes. <laughs> but then it is the snake's turn. The snake gets a turn? The snake does get a turn. Damn. And Ghost Ooh. Slinger didn't try to get away, but she did stab it, so it's going to constrict her. <laughs> Uh-oh, that's a not critical 20, so it's going to do... Uh-oh, it's going to do... 12 damage. I'm dead. <laughs> so, as Ghost Slinger stabs up in its mouth and she's covered in its blood, it squeezes on her really hard and Ghost Slinger passes out from the pain. But what if, like, well, she was asleep. Was she recovering health? She would have if she'd had a whole night's sleep, which she would have got if she'd have taken her watch and then gone back to sleep at the end of her watch. <laughs> I didn't want to have Well, anything. this could have been avoided, child. If I didn't say anything. You're right. If you'd have taken your watch. Taken your watch like you're supposed to. <laughs> so, this then is it is... Mythical watch, okay? It's not real. It's not really the middle of the night, and I'm waking you up. <laughs> I mean, it is the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you understand? It's not... <laughs> We're not really doing it. You're not anything. actually doing no. a chore. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's a mythical chore. <laughs> I hate it either way. So. <laughs> your mythical watch. And Merlin, can- Merlin, it's your turn, and you've just seen uh, the half-elf girl. Oh, actually, shoot. Merlin, I'm just a second. Yes. You're asleep. <laughs> I am asleep. You're asleep. Oh, you all this racket? No, it's a snake. It didn't scream, and she didn't say she screamed, and all you did was say, hey, I think there's something in the bushes, and then all of a sudden, the snake. He's asleep. I rolled a constitution check. He didn't wake up. Shayla! Okay, <laughs> now it's your turn, Asharis, and you oh. yelled Sheila real loud. Merlin, you are awake. You are jolted into wakefulness as Asharis screams, Sheila! <laughs> <laughs> and it is Asharis' oh, no. turn again. Does the, does the cat have any effect on the snake? So the the cat can attack it, but only if I don't attack it. And her attacks are not as powerful as mine. So oh, this whole like wanting to be a beast master is not really working out for me. Well, <laughs> you gotta you, you gotta wait until uh, later. I, what level are you now? Oh, I know what level you will be after this fight. Thanks, Ghost Slinger. You accidentally made me level you. And die. And die. And die. Oh, die. I, I am dead. I will never be. You're awake. unconscious. You're not dead. Stop saying no. you're dead. Okay. All right, Asharis, what are you going to do? Is it almost dead? My, it's it is. My turn. Nope, not. You only woke up on Asharis' turn. You were asleep, I'm afraid. Because okay. no one called out for you. <sighs> Forgot about you. You think my dog can go out? While yeah, you guys are your, your dog can go out. That's fine. All right, I'll, I'll be right back. Thank okay. You so much. He's like, got her legs crossed. All mm-hmm. right, Asharis. It is definitely not looking so great. It is bleeding a lot. All right. Short swords. 17 on the D20. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. Excellent. You uh, swing decisively at this creature and pierce through its scales. And I got a five, plus my dexterity of four, so nine. Okay. I have Do I need the other hand? Oh, I have them all done. Other hand. All of the main ones yes, are done. Yes, yes. It does not die. You you okay. pierce through its scales and add to its gushing blood, but it... Oh, and you, you think it starts to let go of Ghost Slinger, and it's focused its uh, attention on you exclusively. All right, I hit, I got 11 plus my deck to four. Yep, that'll do it. Finish it off. So you bring the other hand around and swipe at it. Yes. Let's see if we kill it. Three plus four is uh, seven. Where are we getting seven? Seven! We are lucky. We're going, we're going to Vegas! It doesn't die, but instead it lunges at you to try and bite. 
Does it want to eat you? It gets a 12. Uh, no. It gets an 18. What? It gets Jeez. an 18 to hit you. So it lunges across Ghost Slinger's unconscious body and 18. bites at you. 18? Oh, well, of course that beats me. Obviously, oh. we're all the Wait! Yeah. What is your AC? 15. Okay. Hopefully 11 plus 4 from the dexterity, so 15. So, it does... I didn't take that fancy armor. You got the fancy armor. Great. Yours would be 15. If I would have put it on. Well, surely you're wearing it. Well, if I was wearing it, then I would have known. No. <laughs> It does 12 damage. It does 12 damage. Oh my god. Okay, 12 damage. Yep, you take 12 piercing damage as it bites into you. It's not good. It's half my health. You're gonna kill us again. It's you! It's our fault! It's not my fault, it's your fault! We're gonna have to sleep all over again in hopes that we can reheal ourselves. No, we can't. It's true, we'll sleep forever with the fishes. <laughs> Alright. Merlin wakes up, and he looks across at you guys, and he's like, Oi! Jeebies! What is that? And he <laughs> flings a firebolt, and a firebolt launches from his hand and into the side of this thing. Uh, the smell of burnt blood fills your nostrils. It does. Three damages. That's not very good. <laughs> not very good. I don't know if he's got to the point where it does 2d10 or not, but it does three damage. And Asharis, it's your turn again. You have a very large snake creature that has just bit you and latched onto the side of your body. What are you going to do? So if I try to get away, can I still attack it? Oh, you can attack it either way, but you can try and get away if you want. It's a lower DC than being uh, constricted. So roll me a d20 for getting away. Like a brain sucking spider there, Jessica. Nine. Plus Four. your dexterity. Five. 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 Yeah, you get away. Freedom. Freedom! Far enough away that I can still attack it. Yep, so roll me uh, two d20s. Let me know what they are. What about 16 and 16? That'll do. I believe your your plus damage alone finishes this, uh, this big snake thing off. So do you want to describe it as you uh, get away from it and then turn around and do it in? It's my favorite... Uh way to kill the uh, the wild beasts. So you dart away like a, you know, NFL running back, spin around, and under its head with the swords, whoosh, KO. Lop its head clean off of its body, and you hear it go, No, <laughs> no words from the child. <laughs> I mean, geez. I'm telling you, that's from Mortal Kombat. Okay, when she used to jump up on top of him and cut his head off. That was the finishing move. I'm pretty sure. Finish him. That's right. K.O. So, uh, Merlin gets up out of bed, out of his, his bedroll, and he comes over to our very much so unconscious ghost slinger and starts to unwrap the serpent from her and tends to her needs. Weems. Hello, I'm here. Ghost Slinger, roll me a d20. Oh, our app has stopped working. <laughs> Your technology's just not doing so hot tonight. This is not working out, is it? <laughs> 17. I'm telling you, them sevens. We should be at the crap stable tonight. Uh, Alright, you pass your death saving throw and roll me another d20. 19. You pass your other death saving throw, and then Merlin manages to stabilize you without using a health potion. So you have you have one HP. Ah, one. As you uh, blink your eyes and wake back up. He was number one. He was number one. You draw in a deep breath now that the 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 weight of this thing squeezing on you has let go. But unfortunately, you are covered in blood, as are as is your bedroll and most of your stuff. That's fine. Yeah, and we smell like garbage. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and you all smell like garbage. We still taking a shower. We can came nearby the creek. So Merlin, you're awake now. 
and Asharis is dying. So, or not Asharis, Ghost Slinger is, uh, she's stable. She has one hit point now. You used your medicine proficiency to make sure that she's all right. You want to take her watch? Of course. Since she's almost dead? Well, I'll be standing during my watch and paying attention. So what do you guys want to do with this giant snake corpse? Let me let me roll a thing real quick. Let's let's have skewered uh, snake snakes. snakes. <laughs> yeah. All right. You, uh, okay. Merlin. You look <laughs> over this this snake for any magical components you can use, but you don't find anything particularly really? interesting. He doesn't have like fangs or something we can use for something. Uh, it's not a a poisonous snake. It's a mm, constrictor. constrictor. So mm. you don't find anything that's much different from a regular mundane creature. Can we jerky him? Let's turn him into jerky. <laughs> Another pound of jerky! You guys can definitely make a fire and eat off of the snake if you want. Well, I don't think it's a good idea for fire yet. Alright, so Merlin, you take you take watch. Archimedes flies over to you and sits on your shoulder as you're looking around, making sure that there's nothing else in the bushes that are going to uh, going to pop mm. out and surprise you. Well, my owl likes to eat at night, so... Let's make a snakeskin boots. He'll be happy to fly around and catch up. A- uh, if you want, actually, let's say, no. uh, Asharis, you peel some of the skin off of the snake, and let's say that it's worth, um... It'll need some processing, copies. but it's a, it's a big section of snake skin, so let's say it's worth about five gold. That's a lot. It's a big snake. We can make some boots out of that. That's what I said, boots. <laughs> snake skin boots. All right. I'm going to write that down. I got some snake skin. Yep. Large snake pelt. Five gold. Note down that it's a giant constrictor snake, so that I remember this fight later. Well, actually, you may not wait a long time to try and sell it. You might sell it in Brentwood, and then I won't have to remember. So, yeah, it's whatever. It's five gold, though. Okay. So the rest of the night progresses without any issues. You know, we gave him the health. So, let me... Let's do it this way. Roll a constitution check. Let's say it's a constitution save. Nineteen. Nineteen. Yes, you recover your health. Ghost Slinger, roll your constitution check. Twelve. Ghost Slinger, you recover twelve hit points after getting a good night's sleep the rest of the night. And Marlin, you didn't take any damage, so you're fine. Yep. Our magical levels are still our magical levels levels are still the same. You mean your character levels? Yeah. I think I'm on three now, right? Oh, let me look real quick. It's a good thing I took a close still on book. Two. You can add 150, everybody can add 150 experience points to their character, which I believe makes you all level four. What does that mean? (laughs) That means you all have to read the book and figure out how to level your characters up for next week. Yep, I'm reading the book, and I wanted to be on level three. Now I'm on level four. You're level four, so you will gain additional spell slots and... Merlin, you gain two more spells, so you can pick two more spells out of the book of appropriate level. Yeah, the one I want is anti-gravity. Is that like mm-hmm. level seven? I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's in the book, man. I got the book right Yeah, here. I know. Is it like level seven? I've never heard of it. <laughs> really? It's the number one chosen spell. What are you reading this from? <laughs> the book you sent me <laughs> how is it the level one the number one chosen spell if i've never heard of it well you, you, you gotta read the book <laughs> i love it i see anti-magic field reverse gravity i'm right that's, that's a level one. seven spell <laughs> that's the one that's the one i want i gotta get there uh, well, for you that? to have level seven spells okay this spell reverses gravity in a 50 foot radius 100 foot high Cylinders centered on a point within range. All creatures and objects that aren't somehow anchored to the ground in the area fall upward and reach the top of the area. When you cast the spell, a creature can make a dexterity saving throw to grab onto a fixed object it can reach, thus avoiding the fall. If some solid object, such as a ceiling, is encountered in this fall, falling objects and creatures strike it just as they would during a normal downward fall. 
If an object or creature reaches the top of the area without striking anything, it remains there, oscillating slightly for the duration. At the end of the duration, the affected objects and creatures fall back down. I love it. It's the number one chosen spell. Everybody seems to like that one. Let me let me really quick. I have the player's handbook right here. Let me just give you an idea. All right, we le- we reached level four tonight. Wizards are on page who knows what. I should remember. I've been a wizard. These are all spells, 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 combat, ability scores. Maybe I was... Here we go. Page 112 is wizards. You're at level 4 tonight. To get to a level 7 spell slot, we'll have to reach the 13th level. Which means we will have to play for... And it turned one million. <laughs> two years. Dang, man. So what What? What happened? Because my phone went dead for some reason. Uh, I said, in order to reach a level 7 spell slot, we will have to play until 13th level, which we should be able to do in probably about two years. Nah, maybe a year and a half, maybe a year and a quarter. Oh, my God. I guess I'll have to read the book further and see if I can find something else then. Well, maybe a closer target. <laughs> Because yeah. I have, I have I this campaign. This campaign is planned through probably about seventh level. That's where I need to be. No, your character will be level mm-hmm. seven. At level seven, character, you will have access to a fourth level spell slot. See, that's what is crazy. I don't. It's like what? <laughs> yeah, I know. I kind of wish that they'd have named the spell level slots differently, so that they weren't levels. But I kind of understand why so they did it that way. Out. There's a there's a chart on table or page 113. So what is he oh, right just here? Up to, I'm just up to 113. What is he now? Page. Yeah, what is he now? So at level four, you are able to improve ability scores. So you can increase your constitution, your uh, strength, your dexterity by two points. And you can split that to two different stats or put it all on one. You learn a new cantrip. Actually, Merlin at fourth level, so you'll have a fourth cantrip, so you can pick a new cantrip, and you have four first level spells and or spell slots, and two second or three, sorry, three second level spell slots. Hmm. So you'll be able to do seven spells a day. Wow, mm-hmm. which is a lot of spells. We don't usually do that much stuff in a day, but that's character yeah. day, not playing day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh well. Let's see. Let me look really quick at what is a ranger. Yes. Let's see. Level four ranger. You get an ability score improvement, and you already have three first level spell slots. Yes. So you get an ability score improvement. Ability score improvement. That means you can add one to two to dexterity, strength. What's the other one's called? Intelligence, history. That's, or not history, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, charisma, and you can split that two up. You can do one here, one there. So if you have like a nine in something, you could make it a 10. And uh, there's a chart that shows what your bonuses become when you increase your ability scores. So that's what you'll want to do is find out what ability score you want to improve, what bonus you want to make higher. And Ghost Slinger, you, so actually it's not that hard to level you guys up. Uh, oh, you will also have to roll a hit die to improve your hit dice, or uh, your overall health. Let's see, where is the rogue? Ranger, oh, they're in alphabetical order, silly buns. Rogue, here we are, at the, what are you, third, fourth level. At fourth level, oh, look, here's the thing. At fourth level, your sneak attack is 2d6, and you get a bit of an ability score improvement. How does sneak attack work? That was the thing I was looking for. Beginning at first level, you know how to strike subtly and exploit a foe's distraction. Once per turn, you can deal an extra 1d6 damage to one creature you hit with an attack if you have advan- er, on an attack if you have advantage on the attack roll. The attack must use a finesse or ranged weapon. You don't need advantage on the attack roll if another enemy of the target is within 5 feet of it. That enemy isn't incapacitated and you ha- don't have disadvantage on your attack roll. You The amount of extra damage increases as you gain levels in this class, as shown in the sneak attack column to, of the rogue table. So, Ghostslinger, are you still paying attention? Mm-hmm. 
when you hit something that is standing next to Ashars or Merlin, you can add an additional 2d6 onto the damage for that turn. So you can use a dagger, which does 1d4, plus your, plus your dexterity modifier, and then have 2d6 more damage on top of that, as long as you're, uh, you're attacking something that's standing next to someone else. Okay. That's pretty good. If we'd have known that this battle, you might not have fallen unconscious. Died. Fallen unconscious. Died. If you're dead, I'll make you roll a new character. Okay. You want to roll a whole new character? You don't want to be Ghost Slinger anymore? I can do either. Well, you can't be a ninja. You'd have to be something totally different. That's the point. What would you be instead? I don't know. Well, think about it for next week. Just in case I die again.